Hey guys, welcome to our kitchen. Today we're gonna prepare carbonara in two different ways, an American way and a Japanese inspired way. When serving a basic carbonara, you'll need an egg and some garlic, although that's not truly traditional, but it tastes great and it's good for you, some pecorino cheese, or parmesan's just fine, and some bacon. Of course, if you really wanna get fancy, guanciale or pancetta is preferable. Salt, black pepper, and any kind of pasta will do. Let's go ahead and get the ingredients ready, or mise en plat as the French say. First thing, I wanna chop up that bacon, chopity chop chop. Now what I wanna do with the garlic is I wanna go ahead and smash it with a knife. Give it a nice crush before peeling it and chopping it. Carbonara is a traditional Roman Italian dish that simply consists of cured pork, cheese, egg, black pepper, and pasta. But there are many modern ways to jazz it up. I want to go ahead and keep this American version as simple as possible. There should be a one-to-one -one ratio of egg and cheese in your egg and cheese carbonara sauce. Stir it up real nice, add a little bit of black pepper, and then go ahead and put it in the fridge. Keep it cool until you're ready to use it. Whoops, dropped one there. I decided to go with fusilli pasta. Go ahead and dump it into boiling salted water. Normally you want the water to be as salty as the sea. This helps imbue the pasta with flavor and it also raises the boiling point of the water, which allows for better cooking. But because we're using bacon, we're not gonna use as much salt as we normally would. The pasta should take between eight and 12 minutes, depending on what type of pasta you used. This gives you plenty of time to prepare your other ingredients. All right, it's been eight minutes and my fusilli is ready, so I'm gonna take it out. This is too much fusilli for one serving, by the way. Meanwhile, my bacon has been cooking on low to medium heat to slowly melt out the fat without burning it. It's starting to look almost done, so now I can add my garlic. Give it a good mix. No need to flip the pan. That's a good way to lose your ingredients. Now I'm ready to add the pasta, the garlic and bacon mixture. What I should have done was probably take out a third of this pasta. It was a little bit too much. Go ahead and mix it around, get all that bacon grease mixed up nicely with the rest of the ingredients. All right, we're almost there. Now I'm gonna turn off the heat and slowly add in my chilled carbonara sauce from earlier. This is the trickiest part because if your dish is too hot, the proteins in your egg will immediately denature and you'll get scrambled eggs. To help avoid this, I'm also gonna add in some pasta water that I saved from earlier. This will help emulsify the sauce and thoroughly mix everything together. That's all there is to it. This is looking great. I'm ready to plate and eat it. Unfortunately, there are a couple of problems with this American version of pasta carbonara I just made. First of all, it's pasta heavy. I should have taken out a third of the fusilli when I added it to the pan. And secondly, there do appear to be some scrambled eggs in the sauce. Overall, not bad, but let's see if we can do better with the Japanese version.
Alright, so for the Japanese version, it's going to be pretty much the same as the American version, but we are going to add in a couple different ingredients. So over here, I am chopping up my garlic, and the first different ingredient that we're going to use is shiitake mushroom. I like the flavor of shiitake mushrooms with the smokiness from the bacon. So I have some pretty large shiitake mushrooms here. I'm only going to use two heads and you want to go ahead and cut off the stems. They tend to be woody and tough. So go ahead and slice the mushrooms up like this. And also your bacon. I like my bacon kind of thick so I'm going to leave the pieces kind of big. We'll put everything on the same plate just so we don't have to wash extra dishes but if your boyfriend or your husband is doing the dishes it's totally fine go ahead and put all your ingredients onto different plates in this bowl I'm going to crack one egg and then add in some parmigiano reggiano. I don't really like the flavor of pecorino, so I'm just going to stick with parmesan. And I like a lot of black pepper. Go ahead and whisk that up and put that egg mixture in the fridge. Now that all your ingredients are ready to go, we are ready to move on to the cooking process. Over here, I have a shallow pan filled with boiling water. I am going to add about a tablespoon of salt to it. You always want to make sure you salt the cooking liquid for your noodle or else it's going to be tasteless. The second different ingredient I am going to use for the Japanese version is a package of frozen udon noodle. The frozen udon will only take about 2-3 to three minutes to cook. I'm just going to stir it to break it up a little. And I am going to reserve a little bit of that cooking liquid. I'd say about half a cup is more than plenty. After 3 minutes, we are going to strain our udon. Now we are ready to cook our bacon. Start with a low heat, dump in your bacon, add in some more black pepper, toss that bacon around to make sure it's cooking nice and evenly. to add a little bit of olive oil to my bacon because later on when we add in our shiitake mushrooms they are going to absorb all that bacon fat and you do need a little extra fat in order to emulsify the sauce after that bacon gets nice and brown and crispy we're going to add the garlic and shiitake mushroom at the same time Stir and toss the mushrooms to make sure they're all coated in that bacon fat and olive oil. I'm adding a little bit of Japanese soup base powder here. I'm using scallop flavor, you know, to add some umame. And again, some more black pepper. The shiitake mushrooms are done when they look glossy and translucent. Dump in your pre-cooked udon noodle and start stirring it to make sure every noodle is covered in bacon fat. And meanwhile, also add in some of that cooking liquid that we reserved from earlier and continue stirring. And then we are ready to add in our carbonara sauce that we made earlier. Go ahead and dump that right into the pan with your noodles and your bacon and your mushrooms. 
And right after that, you want to start stirring it immediately. You basically want to be mixing it vigorously like what I'm doing here. Shake the pan and stir it at the same time and add in some of that liquid. Keep stirring it. After stirring it for a little bit, I realized that earlier after I made the sauce, I forgot to keep it in the fridge. And then when I put it in the pan, it immediately just turned into scrambled egg. So as you can see here, the sauce is not creamy like the normal carbonara should be. It's very, it just doesn't look right. It almost kind of, no, it doesn't almost. It looks like vomit. My eggs is completely scrambled. Uh, but, you know, we're still gonna go ahead and plate it up. Alright guys, let's try that one more time. This time with a cold egg mixture. And we're gonna do the same thing. Dump that in your noodles and start stirring. And you notice over here, I turn off my heat just to make sure that I don't scramble it again. And add in your cooking liquid and then keep stirring it. This is already starting to look much better than the last one we made. The sauce looks glossy and creamy. It's thickened and they are sticking to your noodles, which is how it's supposed to be. And we'll play that up. Garnish it with some more black pepper, some Japanese rice seasoning, which has seaweed in it, and a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese to complete this Japanese version of carbonara. Mm -hmm. 